हाई फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू माई चैनल एंड हेयर आई एम बैक अगेन विद द पार्ट थ्री ऑफ एंड्रॉयड वियर ओ एस एप्लीकेशन डेवलपमेंट ट्यूटोरियल सो इफ यू गाइज हैव नॉट सीन माई पार्ट वन एंड पार्ट टू वीडियोज प्लीज गो टू द लिंक्स इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन बिलो एंड वॉच दम फर्स्ट बिफोर कंटिन्यूइंग विद दिस वन basically in this video i am going to teach you how we can connect a rest api through android and fetch data from the internet and display it on our google watch here so if you guys are already familiar with the uh, google watch development uh, android wear os application development then you can continue further otherwise do watch my previous videos and uh, so before getting started please subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for the next tutorials as well okay so let's get started as i told you in the introduction that today what we are going to do is we are going to connect our google watch here with the rest api such that when i will click on this button then this joke which is appearing here instead of appearing from a stand alone list like this we will simply be fetching it from the internet using a rest api so first of all we have to select which rest api to use so lucky for you i already have found this rest api called as i can has that joke.com and i will show you in my postman here that if i hit this rest api with an accept header as application json and if i click on send then you will see that i am getting a response in a json format which is basically having three things id the joke string and the status in which case uh, in this case it's 200 because we successfully got a response so how we can get this json data into my google watch or in my android application the simple thing is let's just first start from the scratch first what we have to do is we have to get this data in some java object okay so what we will do is we will create a package which is uh, just called as model so what we will do here is we'll click here on package just add model here and what we will do is we will create a java class a pojo class which is going to basically get all the data from the json format in itself okay so here let's create these variables id and then the joke and the status okay so first of all if we are creating a pojo class always we have to add getter setter into them either you can create the getter setter in this class itself but in my case i will be using something called as lombok so lombok is basically a an annotation processor and you have to add its dependency in your build.gradle file so i will just uncomment these dependencies here and click on sync now after doing that if you just place here at the rate data annotation then automatically your joke class will get its getter setter methods for all the variables okay so now we have got the model class with our, ourselves and what we have to do is we have to create a rest call to that url so that we can fetch our json data into this java object to create a rest call we will not be using a simple http url connection object in this case what we are going to use is something called as retrofit so retrofit is basically a type safe api which help us to create an http connection and get some data if you want to learn more about retrofit you can basically google retrofit here and the first link which will appear is from the makers of retrofit which are square open source and you can read about retrofit here so what type safe http client basically means that in case of retrofit what you have to do is you have to specify the type of response body which you are going to get from your url so for example if i go here the type of response i am expecting from my json call or my rest call is this joke class object so i have to basically specify this object in my call type in my call response type and in that case if i am calling my rest api and, and i am getting that response 
it will be a successful call and if i am not getting that response it will be a unsuccessful call or there will be some sort of error okay so that is why because we are checking the type of the response it's called as a type safe http client first of all to use retrofit we have to add its dependency so we i will just uncomment these a uh, lines here so what we are implementing is retrofit and we are also using retrofit converter which is a converter json uh, why we are using this converter json here because we need to convert our json our string json into our java object so if you want to parse your json into a java object we generally use a json converter and in our case we will be using a a uh, json converter factory object which we can get from this dependency okay we will see that definitely in the tutorial uh, following so now i have got the retrofit dependency with me and the next step is to basically create an api which will when connect to the uh, rest url will give a, will give us some result okay so i will just create a controller class here and uh, not a controller class but a controller interface here so in retrofit we have to basically create an interface here i can name my interface as uh, joke controller interface and uh, after doing this what i will do here is i will have to create a function called as get jokes and what this function will do is it will return me an object of call which is having a response body type of joke okay so let's create this function here and let me import my dependencies and after i have imported it what i have to mention here is what type of call i am going to make so just like i showed you in my postman i am going to make a get call here and what will be the url of that call so as you see here in my postman the url of my call is i can has that joke.com slash so basically there is nothing following this domain name if there was something following here for example like id or something else in that case i would have added this into my get after uh, get path here okay but because there is nothing following it so i will just put slash in my get path so this basically means that whenever i will be calling a base url of so of any domain so in our case this will be my base url so whenever i will be calling the base url of this controller by default i will land on this function and i will get a response of call with a body of joke okay so i hope that is clear i think it will be more clear when we will start using it okay so yeah that is it let's just put it in some other package controller okay and uh, let's create this package here so that our mvc structure is well maintained so let's create a controller package here and let's move this class here okay so i hope this part is now clear so now let's go to the main activity and now what we are going to do is we are going to call my rest api on the click of my button and then fetch the jokes from there okay so first of all what we have to do is we will delete this part of hard coding the jokes in an array list and now let's design our retrofit api so the first thing you have to do is you have to create a retrofit api here so what we will do here is we will create an object and this object will be created like new retrofit uh, sorry new retrofit builder uh, and then just add here converter factory and the converter factory will be a json converter factory dot create and then we have to basically mention a base url as i explained before and in our case the base url is i can has that joke.com and finally we will be doing a build now after you have created your retrofit api object just click on this and now we will create the object of our 
joke controller interface so i will just create a final object here why i am creating final because i will be using this in my on click function and because this is an inner function you can only pass final objects in it so final joke controller and joke controller becomes equals to retrofit api dot create and then just do this joke controller dot class so after you have registered your joke controller with your retrofit api now we can definitely use it to make calls okay so let's go inside this on click function okay now we are inside this on click function and uh, this is how you can call your api and get your result so first of all i will just uh, delete this portion and we will do this later and i will create an object of call joke here and i will create a call object and it will be called using joke controller dot get joke okay and let's first import this call class now so what you have done here is basically this joke api this uh, controller class is actually calling the function uh, calling the rest api and now we have got the uh, response of a call object so we have got a, a result of a call object okay but what you have to do is that this call is right now not in a queue what we have to do is we have to kind of register this call as a call back and once you have enqueued this then whenever this call is made two functions will be called here on response and on failure so basically what you are doing is you are creating a call object and you are putting it into a queue and registering it so that whenever that call is made then if the call is successful if it is uh, giving some response then you will go inside this function if the call fails you, know, you will come inside this function so in our case we are assuming that our call will succeed but we will check if our response is successful and if it is successful then what we will do we will simply uh, set our m text to view set text to the string of the joke so basically my response dot get dot body dot get joke okay so basically i will uh, here i will just change the string of my text view okay but in case uh, if my response is not successful what i will do i will just uh, set here that uh, your call has call has failed and if my response is not successful i mean if the response if the call was successful but uh, my response was not uh, successful uh, in that case i will just set here a value called as um, your response was unsuccessful okay so now what you are doing is you are simply calling your rest api and you are handling the failure and successful scenarios here perfectly okay so should we try this out or not okay let's try it and see if this works or not and if this uh, works then it's pretty much great otherwise we will fix this okay so our build is running so as i told you in my previous videos first of all your build runs and then your app gets installed on your watch actually this is the same case with your android phone as well so in both the cases the app builds and then it installs okay so there was some issue here and uh, right so there is this your okay now it's installed and i will just click on this and okay yeah so there is some issue here right let's go to the debug and see what issue we are getting yeah so you can see that there is some fatal exception okay guys so i found out what the issue was the issue was basically in my build.gradle i was using a higher version 2.9.0 and uh, this version is actually compatible only with java 8 
but in my android studio i currently do not have java 8 support right now and hence i am just decreasing the version to 2.1.0 if you have java 8 support in your android right now or what you can do is you can add compile options here so basically you can add some compile options and uh, i will uh, tell you that as well so i found this helpful link on stack overflow and if you add these compile options in that case you will be able to use the latest version of retrofit as well uh, but for the simplicity of this video i would not like to go into that detail and i will just skip this and use retrofit version 2.1.0 and uh, let me see if now my application works or not so just remember for the last error i just only reduced my retrofit version to 2.1.0 and uh, let's see so in now my application is running successfully and now i will click on this button and uh, well nothing happened oh so you can see what i got my call has failed and if I go to the debug, in that case, I should be able to find some error. Oh, there is no error. So let me go back to my main dot activity. It means there was no exception as such. Or if it was, then it was probably handled. So you see here, my call is getting filled. So I can definitely put a debugger here and then I can debug my call and see what has happened. And uh, that is how you can use debugger with your Android. You can put debug points and you can easily check where your call is actually failing. So right now I have clicked on my button and you see after inspecting this throwable object, I get that my JSON is getting malformed. So if my JSON is getting malformed, it means that there is some issue with my model object or my controller object. Let's go and check my controller here. So you see what's the issue here. I basically provided headers in my postman right here, but I forgot to add those headers in my controller class. So first thing I have to do is I have to provide these headers here and let's do this. And another thing I remember we missed out while creating our Pooja object is to implement serializable package. So that's the thing. Whenever you are implementing your Pojo object in case of retrofit, you have to make it implement serializable. Now let's click on debug again and I will remove the debug point from the failure and hopefully this time it will come in this successful response. So now my application is deploying and it is. Now I will click on this button and let's see if I am able to get my jokes. Oh, did you see that? I get a new joke here. People who do not eat gluten are really going against the grain. So you see now if I click on this button as many times, I will be getting a new joke from the REST API, which is I has that joke.com that I have specified here. So guys, this was a short tutorial about how you can connect a REST API to your application and fetch the data from the internet instead of providing it through some hard-coded string. So guys, I hope you liked this tutorial and you learned something from it. And uh, if you like my videos, if you uh, want me to do some more stuff, then please subscribe to my channel. And thank you so much everyone and bye-bye.